Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you guys are new, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys don't know me, my name is Aaliyah M. Clark. I am a North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia real estate professional. Thank you guys for tuning into the video. Today, we have an exciting topic for all of you aspiring homeowners out there. We're going to take you through a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to buy a house in the beautiful state of North Carolina. So first, we need to get prepared. Let's go ahead and understand your budget. Before we dive into the exciting journey of home ownership, let's ensure you are financially prepared Start by calculating your budget. Your budget will determine the price range of the homes you are considering. To calculate it, add up your monthly income, list your expenses, and set financial goals. Also, check your credit. Your credit score plays a crucial role in the mortgage process. It affects your eligibility and the interest rate you'll be offered. So it is essential to check your credit score. If it is less than perfect, work on improving it by paying bills on time and reducing your credit card balances. Also, you should be saving saving for a down payment. Saving for a down payment is a significant part of the home buying process. Most home buyers aim for a down payment of 20% of the home's purchase price. Consider strategies such as setting up a dedicated savings account, cutting unnecessary expenses, and exploring down payment assistance programs. So yeah, while you know most people think that 20% is the what you have to offer, I would almost never recommend that a person puts down 20% unless they absolutely have to. If you're a first time home buyer, then more than likely you will qualify for the FHA loan, which is a 3.5%, or even a conventional loan, which is you can do like 5% down. So if you don't have to put 20% down, then don't. But definitely at the maximum, save for 20%. I know that a lot of people do not have that kind of money laying around. So definitely make sure that you are paying attention to those down payment assistance programs. If you guys like videos like this, I can definitely make more videos on down payment assistance programs within your state. If you guys are enjoying this video and it's adding some value so far, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel because there are more videos to come. Next, we need to make sure that we're choosing the right location. Researching North Carolina cities and neighborhoods. So I've made some videos on a few cities throughout North Carolina, mostly in the Charlotte area, but we need to understand that North Carolina offers a wide range of cities and neighborhoods, each of which is unique and has its own charm. To find the perfect location, you'll need to research the different areas, consider factors like proximity to work, quality of schools, and safety, and local amenities. If you guys want to see specific cities, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll make sure that I go ahead and get those done for you. Next, you need to prioritize your needs. Identifying your priorities is crucial when choosing a location. Are you looking for a family-friendly community, bustling city, a bustling city life, or perhaps a serene rural setting? Clarifying your priorities will help you narrow down your options. Next, we need to understand the real estate market trends. Staying informed about the real estate market trends is essential. Make Markets can vary significantly and it is crucial to to know the current conditions, price trends, and future forecasts, and future forecasts for your chosen area. Next up is finding a real estate professional or a real estate agent. So if you guys don't know any, I'm here for you. I am, like I said in the beginning of the video, a North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, and Georgia real estate professional. So if you guys are in any of those states, don't hesitate to reach out to me because obviously you're watching this video and why go find another realtor when I'm right here in front of you? I'm here for you. So you should go ahead and find a real estate professional. The role of real estate estate agents is they can be your greatest ally in the home buying process. They have expertise to navigate the local market and guide you through every step of your journey. With that being said, you should interview those agents. Don't hesitate to interview multiple agents before choosing the right one for you. Ask about their experience, request client references, and assess their knowledge on the North Carolina market. Make sure you feel comfortable and confident in your choice. So guys, like I said, I'm here for you guys. Like this is a shameless plug, but yeah. Yeah, just make sure that you guys are comfortable with your real estate agent because this is an extremely, extremely important decision. Next, we have to consider mortgage pre-approvals. This is probably one of the most important sections or areas within this whole entire video is getting a pre-approval. So why pre-approval matters? Mortgage pre-approval is a critical step in your home buying journey and it demonstrates to sellers that you are serious and you are a qualified buyer, setting the stage for a smoother process. When I tell you, if you go into the home buying process and want to submit an offer with 
without a pre-approval, the seller might not even look at your offer. You cannot submit an offer without a pre-approval or proof of funds. Also, you need to gather your financial documents. To get a pre-approval, you'll need to provide certain financial documents. These typically include recent pay stubs, bank statements, W-2s, or tax returns, and evidence of any additional income or assets. So usually they just go to the lenders and then that way that they can get your pre-approval generated for you. And then while we're on the topic of lenders, you need to select a lender. Definitely shop around for lenders because not all of them are created equal. I would say go ahead and get as you know many different pre-approvals as you can within the first 14 days. You have up to 45 where they will condense all of those pre-approvals together into one on your credit report because you're shopping rates. But make sure that you get a couple of them done. Don't find the first lender that you don't go with the first lender that you, you meet because you don't know if they have the best things to offer you. So when you're selecting a lender, choosing the right one is vital to securing a mortgage with favorable terms. Shop around, compare interest rates, fees, and loan types. Your real estate agent can provide you with recommendations or connect you with preferred lenders. So for me, I work with like two or three lenders that I recommend pretty much everybody to. I know that they're good and I trust them and you know that I'm a good real estate professional and you trust me. So therefore, I'm going to give you the best possible lender that I know personally. So if you guys need recommendations, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll make sure that I connect you with them. Next up is the home search and evaluation. So for some home searching strategies, let's dive into the exciting part, your home search. There are various ways to search for homes in North Carolina, both online and through real estate agents. Popular online platforms like Zillow and Realtor.com can be valuable resources. But like I said, you can definitely reach out to your real estate agents and they can send you homes that are on the market that may not be on Zillow or Realtor.com. Then you should evaluate the properties. When touring homes, pay close attention to essential factors such as property condition, size, layout, and potential future upgrades. Take notes and photos to help you remember each property's strengths and weaknesses. So for me, as a realtor, if I see something crazy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture or I'm gonna make some type of note to make sure that when we are submitting our offer, we put those things on there to see if we can get some type of you know lower price done or we can go in at a lower offer usually what i do is i'll take notes and if our offer gets accepted what i will do is i'll refer back to those notes and consult with my buyers let them know hey like would you like to have any of these repaired they say yes i'll go ahead and i'll submit to have that repair request done if the sellers don't want to make any repairs we will ask for a credit if they agree to the credit then we will get the credit at closing more than likely so just make sure that when you are evaluating these properties that you are writing down the things that you see that you may want corrected. Then we're going to actually make the offer. Once you found a home that fits your criteria, it's time to make an offer. Your real estate agent will guide you through this process, helping you to determine a competitive price and negotiating with the sellers. So your agent is only as good as their negotiation skills, okay? If they cannot get the best possible price for you, then they, you might wanna consider another agent. Your agent should be able to negotiate anything almost. Now, whether it'll get accepted is a different story, but you know, the real estate market is only as good as what people are willing to pay for. So just make sure that you have a good agent that is ready to make those offers for you and is ready to negotiate. Next up, we have the closing process. So your offer got accepted. Congratulations. After your offer is accepted, the process enters due diligence phase. You'll typically have inspections, appraisals, financing contingencies to fulfill before closing. So due diligence is basically like that's your time to really like make sure that you know everything is on the up and up if the appraisal comes in lower then you'll go back to the negotiating table with the sellers and see what we can do about that inspections come back and there needs to be repaired you go back to the drawing table with the sellers and negotiate those if they're not a big deal for you then you may go ahead and just keep on going and bypass it and then speaking of home inspections we got to consider those home inspections are a crucial steps to uncover hidden issues with the property a qualified inspector will assess the home's condition and provide provide a detailed report. Use this report to negotiate repairs and request concessions. So like I said earlier, you might see some things that are on the inspection report that need to be repaired. So what you'll do is you'll get that inspection report from the inspector and then you'll go ahead and request those repairs from the seller. If they don't want to put any repairs into it, they just want to go ahead and give you a credit. They may opt to give you a credit. It will be up to you to make those repairs later on. We're going to have to come to some common ground. That means that we're not on the same page. So that's just where negotiation comes in as well. Next, we need to secure financial financing. Securing your financing involves working closely with your lender, providing any additional documents or information they require, and arranging for 
for an appraisal to ensure that the property's value aligns with the agreed upon price. So like I said earlier, sometimes the appraisal may come in lower than what you offer for it. And that means that you're overpaying. So we're more than likely going to go back to the negotiating table with the sellers to see how we can, you know, work those numbers to work out for both the seller and the buyer. Next, we need to do the final walkthrough. Before closing, conduct a final walkthrough of the property to ensure it is in the same condition as when you made your offer. Verify that any agreed upon repairs have been completed. If you, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna give you guys an extreme like, but say for instance, you have closing in a day and you do, you decide not to do a final walkthrough. And then the day that you were supposed to do the final walkthrough, the house burns down. Then what? <laughs> do the final walkthrough, guys. Do the final walkthrough, please. Okay, it, I promise you it's worth it. You're about to make a big financial purchase. You need to go ahead and make sure you do the walkthrough and make sure that the house is still there, that a tree didn't fall on it, that nobody broke in. You need to make sure that all of those those things are on the up and up okay i promise you'll you won't regret it and to like be less extreme you probably just need to go ahead and make sure that any repairs that you requested have been completed so then we have closing so closing costs understanding that closing costs encompass various fees associated with the purchase including lender fees title insurance and taxes your lender will provide a loan estimate and a closing disclosure outlining those costs be prepared to cover these expenses so not every transaction is going to have have your the seller paying for your closing costs you may have to pay for your closing costs but if you did like i said earlier in the video and you explore some of those down payment assistance programs then more than likely some of those costs can you know come up off you a little bit so that's not necessarily the closing cost but it does take some money off of you know the strain that you're going to feel as far as doing down payment and doing the closing costs so make sure that you guys are prepared to pay those closing costs and if you can ask your agent to possibly negotiate it but if it's not common in that market right now then maybe just you know make sure that you have the money in order to close do that if you're a first-time home buyer look into the fha loan if you're not interested in the fha loan go to conventional so just be prepared to pay for the closing costs because you know you may not be able to get the sellers to pay for it so just make sure that you have those expenses at the very minimum next we're going to go ahead and sign the papers during the closing meeting you'll sign the final paperwork including the mortgage note and the deed the, your real estate agent, attorney, and lender will guide you through this process. Review each document carefully and ask questions if needed. Don't be afraid to ask these people questions. That's what they're there for. Then you get your keys. Finally, after all of the necessary paperwork and transferring funds, you'll receive the keys to your new home. Congratulations, you're a new homeowner. So now let's just go ahead over some additional tips and resources. When it's time to move in, plan the logistics carefully. Hire professional movers and in list the help of friends and family. Don't forget to update your address with important institutions like the DMV, post office, and banks. Also, you have some home ownership responsibilities. Owning a home comes with the ongoing responsibilities such as property maintenance, paying property taxes, and homeowners insurance. Be prepared for those responsibilities and budget them accordingly. Let's go ahead and wrap up our step-by-step -step guide to buying a house in North Carolina. We hope you found this video helpful on your journey to home ownership. Make sure you guys go ahead and like, comment, subscribe to the channel. It would really help us reach more people. If you guys have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment down below. You can most definitely email me and I will be there to help you every step of the way. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.